Hello everyone. Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dan Kelly. I hope everyone is doing well out there. Uh, thanks for joining me today on today's episode. It is Topaz Studio 2. This is a great time if you have a lot of free time in your hands to really delve into Topaz Studio 2 and really unleash its power. Uh, this is a series that I'm working on called uh, Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox. And in this uh, video today, we're starting out with this image, which I will link in the description below in case you want to give it a go yourself. But we're starting out with this image and we're turning it into this image, a painting. So I thought this would be fun today. So I'll show you all the steps that I have made to get to this point and hopefully you're going to learn a good bit today. So without any further ado, let's get started. I made this image today entirely inside of Topaz Studio 2. So what I'm going to do is click on open here. I just want to show you how you open up a project. So I'm going to click open and it, uh, uh, opens up my browser and I'm in this uh, folder called Topaz Studio 2 and I have this uh, file here called House and Bridge and notice it's a .ts2 that's how uh, Topaz Studio names its project files I'm just gonna double click it and uh, let me see if I can double click it yeah double click it I guess I only single clicked it and that opens it up right here and you can see Here's the image and here's all my layers. Now I'm going to break this down one layer at a time and show you what I did. So let's get started. I went ahead and shut all my layers off so I can just take you through this one layer at a time. Okay. And you notice right down here it says house and bridge .ts2. This is the base layer. So there's the base image right there, the original image. Okay. So let's, the first thing I did was added AI remix. So let's turn this on and you'll see what I did here. Okay, let's open this up so we can see. I use this um, preset in here called Backroad Bliss. Okay, and you have all these different uh, remix uh, presets that you can choose from. But again, I chose this one right here, uh, Backroad Bliss. Let me click on another one so you can see what it does. Let's click on like this one. And they'll all interact differently with your image. So you can try different ones out here and see. Um, but notice one thing here, I put this in the soft light blend mode. If I take it out of the soft light blend mode and put it in normal, that's what it actually looks like, okay. So I like to play around with the blend modes here, and a lot of times I will use these blend modes, but right there, that gives it a nice painterly look right there by itself. So let's go ahead and uh, let's shut this layer off. Whoops, that's the basic adjustment layer. Right there, so there's before and there's the after. And what else did I do in here? I pulled the saturation back a little bit, and that's all I really did on that first layer. On to the next layer. Now, see this X right here? If you click this X, you're not getting rid of the filter. You're just getting rid of the uh, filters, uh, what let's call it the adjustment interface here. So just click that, and you can get rid of that. Okay, so now we're going to go to the basic adjustment layer, which is the second layer. Let's turn that on and show you what I did. Not a whole lot in here, and if I click on the layer, we can see the adjustments here. Um, full opacity, didn't touch the exposure, opened up the shadows a little bit, and pulled back the highlights a little bit, and also did a little bit more of uh, desaturation here. So that's that layer. And let's go ahead and turn on the next layer, which is an, an it's hard to say, an abstraction filter. Hard for me anyway. So let's go ahead and turn this layer on. And there we go. And so in here, this is one of my favorite filters inside of Topaz Studio 2, the abstraction filter. It simplifies the image, and I thought it needed a little bit of simplification here. So um, what did I do? I brought the simplify size up, not too much, to like a uh, 0 0.14, and I didn't touch anything else here. Now, again, let's take a look at the um, before and the after. So not a lot there. You'll notice it just gets a little more simplified. Uh, it, some of the harsh lines go away. And, and so this is the way I build up. I'm just like one layer at a time. I'm just thinking in my mind, geez, what do I want to do next? The next uh, layer is a precision detail layer. Now I wanted to build up a little bit of detail. Now I use subtraction to take detail away. But now I want to draw detail to just certain areas of the image here. Okay, so let's turn this layer on right here. And you'll notice I used a... Uh, uh, layer mask in here just to paint this adjustment on certain areas. It was a uh, black layer mask to hide the adjustment everywhere. But what I did here was in the, I just worked with the overall detail. I bumped up my overall small detail, my medium detail, and that was it. I touched nothing else down here. So let's take a look at the before and after here. So here's the, here's the before and here's the after. 
And notice on the bridge here and on the building here, and I believe this little uh, part of this um, little wall here where the water is here. It's a beautiful little scene, but add a little bit of detail there. So let's take a look at that. So here again is the before and here's the after. And again, just drawing some uh, detail to certain parts of the image because you can use detail to get your viewer to look where you want them to look. So that's, that's an important little tip there. As you're working on your image, continue to study it and let your mind kind of wander and go and kind of like drift and see where you really want this image to go to. So I'm liking the painterly look. It's looking really nice. Now I could stop right here and I think it looks really nice. But I kept on going. Let the uh, creative muse in me keep working. Okay. So my next uh, filter is the impression filter. One of my favorites. And nobody else has a filter like this out there. You know, this is really so cool. So let's go ahead and turn this uh, layer on right here. And that adds my little bit of uh, painterly look to my image right here. Let's open this up and I'll show you. I use this brush right here. And I'm on medium strokes. My brush size is at a 0.40. I didn't do a whole lot in here. I changed my stroke size of my brush a little bit. And let me go down to texture here and see if I did anything here. I don't think I did. No, I left my texture on the original texture. Okay, so... And that's basically all I did there. I didn't change my blend mode, but one thing I did do here was took my opacity. Uh, it's at a point or 0 0.45. Let's take it up the whole way. That's what it would look like at full strength. Okay. So again, I took that back to a 0 0.45. Let's see if I can get it back there. I'm using my mouse. Okay, right there. So just ease that off a little bit. So when you're using filters like the impression filter, you don't have to use them at full strength. And a lot of time you can get really beautiful results by decreasing the opacity a little bit. So that, that's another really good tip right there. So let's go ahead and turn this layer off. And now we turn it on. But you can see I'm moving in the right direction and I'm really happy with it. If you've watched any of my uh, painting type videos in the past with Topaz Studio 2, You'll know that I a lot of times like to use a either precision detail or precision contrast filter in conjunction with the impression filter because it kind of amplifies the strokes, the painting strokes a little bit. So that's what I did here. I added a precision contrast filter next. So let's turn this layer on. So here's the before and here's with the precision contrast. But you see how it really emphasizes these painting strokes here which looks really nice. Now remember I used that uh, little circle paintbrush. It's more like a sketchy paintbrush, but look how it brings up all that little sketchy look in the image here. And I'm really loving the way this is looking here. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what I did here. So I took the micro contrast up to a 0.29. Now the micro contrast is really nice when you're working with the impression filter. I find you can get a lot of cool results with it. Let me go ahead and pull this up more. So that was a 0.29, but see that? You can, get, you can get really crazy here. And then I could use layer masking. I might say, you know what? I really love the way these boats are looking in some of these trees. So then I could just hand paint that in with a layer mask on certain parts of the image. So that's pretty cool. But where was I at? I think it was at a point twenty nine. I get talking, I forget where I was at. But right there. And uh, the low contrast, I brought that up a little bit in the medium. And I pulled the high back a little bit. Um, and I did nothing on the lighting here, nor the saturation. So let's go ahead and click this layer off and back on. So again, I'm building, I'm building, I'm studying and have fun with this. You know, this isn't rocket science. This is called creativity. This is called having fun. This is called letting yourself go and being free, just like a child, you know, be creative, have fun. My next filter is a curves filter. Now, let me go ahead and turn this on and watch the uh, lights in the building here and some of the trees. I, I did a little bit of dodging here. So let me go ahead and turn this on and you'll see it here. And again, look at the lights in the buildings. See how they light up a little bit in here? Let's open this curves up here. Now, don't be afraid. You'll see some weird things happening here. And you'll notice my opacity is at 59, uh, at 0.59. I pulled it back from the 100% because I felt it was a little bit too strong. But here's what I did here. I selected this first button right here, which enables you to adjust the luminosity value of the curve. That's the white part of the curve. I just locked the uh, shadows down here and I pulled up the, the midtones and some of the highlights with one. I added a point and just pulled up on it, okay? Just to lighten things up. 
And I'm using a layer mask, and it's a black hide all layer mask, and I painted in the effect where I wanted it to go, like on the buildings and some of the trees and things like that. But let's click on the uh, red channel here. And you'll notice I lift it up on the red channel in the mid-tone area right here because I wanted to make these buildings a little more uh, warm feeling, inviting, and some of the trees too to have a little warmer tone to them. And then I, on the green channel, I did nothing. You'll see it's just a flat curve right here. So that means there's no adjustment added there. Then I went to the blue channel and I added a, a point right here in the center and just drug down. Now, when you're dealing with uh, curves, you have three channels, red, green, and blue. And remember this, this is very important. The opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. So if I take this curve and put a point and pull down, I'm adding yellow to the areas that I have masked in, okay? Now watch when I continue to pull down, see they'll get more yellow. See that, I'll pull it way down. See they're getting a lot more yellow. Now if I pull it up, I'm gonna be adding blue. So if you pull up, you're adding blue. If you pull down, you're adding yellow. And this is a really great way to add color accents and things to your image. So remember that. That is a really good pointer. So let's go ahead and uh, click this eye right here so we can see here's the before and there's the after. But see how this makes this scene more inviting. We have this beautiful glow. What are these people doing in this house? They might be eating supper, having a party, just having fun. We have some riders on bikes out here. It's a beautiful fall day. I'm continuing to study my image and I noticed that these boats are a little on the darker side in this uh, bridge shadow here. I want to draw a little bit of emphasis to the bridge and the boats here. So added another curves layer. So let's go ahead and turn that on and you'll see. So watch the bridge shadow and the boats. See how they lighten up a little bit. Let's open up this curves adjustment here. And you can see here I did nothing with the red, green, and blue uh, channels. But I just worked on the RGB which deals with the luminosity of the curve curve. I locked down the um, the uh, shadow tones here just a little bit so they wouldn't get lifted too high. And then I added a point here on the curve and pulled up on the mid-tones. And that's all I really did right there. And I just used the layer mask to uh, adjust that in. And I used my opacity pull to pull it back. So you see it's at a 0 0.39. So let's take it up full and you'll see. I thought that was too bright. So I just pulled the opacity. So you can either pull the curve down, but in my case, I thought, oh, I'm just pulling the opacity down. There's two, way, there's two ways of getting things done a lot of times. So I just took that to a 0.39, and that just, again, just brought up a little bit of, uh, brought the uh, brightness up a little bit here on the bridge and on the boats. So again, here's the before, and here's the after. Next, I added another impression filter. So it's this layer right here. Let's turn it on, and you'll see the difference. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after. Let's open this up and see what I did. I used a different uh, paintbrush here, type 02, medium strokes. Uh, pulled the paint volume back from the default setting a little bit to uh, 0 0.36. I pulled up the paint opacity a little bit so we could see more of the paint strokes. And uh, I didn't, I touched the stroke length just a little bit. Pulled back on the spill slightly. And one of my favorite adjustments here is the painting progress. Now you notice it's at a uh, 0 0.56, and I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull that up to show you the difference here. But this is a great one. Play with this; it's it's really fun, and you'll see it here in a second. But I also want to point out that I took the opacity and I pulled it back from 100% to like 0.77. Okay, so remember this number 0 0.56. Remind me if I forget it. I might. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this painting progress up the whole way, and see the difference there. And then what I like to do is just slowly drag this back. And notice how things change. I could take it the whole way back to here, and it changes a lot. But I liked it right around uh, 0.56. And I usually work with this adjustment on every painting that I do because this painting progress, progress is a super cool tool inside of, um, or adjustment inside of the impression filter here, okay? So again, let's go to the impression filter here. Let's shut it off. And now let's turn it on. So as you can see, I'm just building. I'm just having fun here. Again, don't be afraid to play around. Just get lost in your image and, and just have a good time. As I just stated a little bit ago, uh, when I added the first impression filter, I always like to come and add a precision contrast or precision detail. Let's turn this on. And you can see here, I just added some precision contrast to just to certain parts of the image. I used the layer mask, and you can see where I painted it, mainly on the building and the bridge and things like that. And let's, um, 
Let's turn it off and turn it on. But you see how nice that is just to draw your viewer to the place you want them to go to. And I'll just show you the adjustments. I just brought up the micro and the low, and that's all I did there. I'm still studying my image, and I'm thinking this white sky is a little boring here. I'd like, to, I'd like it to be blue, okay? So what I did was I added another filter called Color Theme. This is a really great filter. I'm not going to break it down and show you how it all works today because it's a little involved. It's not hard to use, but I'll link, link it in the, in the description below so you can go and watch my video, and I break that filter down for you, okay? So watch that. So let's go ahead and turn this on and look at what it did. It made me a nice blue sky here. It lets you go in here, and let's open this up and alter colors. It breaks it down into the five strongest colors of your image, and then you can come and change any of these colors you want to different colors, which is really cool. And you can adjust the lightness values of them and so on and so forth. But watch that video. You'll see how that works, and it's really awesome. We're almost done. Just a couple more uh, layers, some dodging and burning. The first layer right here. This curves layer right here, I'm going to turn it on. This was a little bit of dodging, so watch the image, and I will shut this off. So there's the before and there's the after. Just brought some highlights out up in the trees and things like that. It's just the curves layer. Nothing touched on the curve, but here's a good little tip, and I've showed this in videos in the past. Put it in the screen mode for dodging, and uh, opacity's up at 100%. And then I just put a black hide all layer mask and just painted in the areas that I wanted to be lighter. And again, here's the before and here's the after. And now the last layer, let's turn it on and it's a burn layer. And okay, so here's the before and here's the after. Notice the sky's got a little darker. I was really happy with that. Uh, let's open this up. No adjustment on the curve, but put this in a multiply blend mode. Really great for burning uh, your image, okay? And I used uh, the layer mask, and if you if you haven't watched my layer masking uh, 101 videos, go ahead and watch those. And because uh, I explain a lot of different things in there on layer masking, but I used the color range to find these blue tones, which affected the water and the sky without touching anything else, which is really cool. Uh, and you can see it in the mask right here. But again, let's turn it. Watch that sky as I turn this off and turn it on. And it's not bleeding into the other colors, which is a really cool, powerful tool. So again, it's in the uh, it's in the multiply blend, blend mode, and it's I'm just burning some things to add some interest to the image. So there's the before and there's the after. And now let's uh, click on the view right here, and let's go to the split horizontal view. So here we go, this is fun. Here's the before and here's the after. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this one today. I had a lot of fun bringing this one to you today. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you today for joining me on the joy of editing with yours truly, Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, stay safe and happy editing.